The 1950s was the golden age of chemical pesticides when people believed without a doubt that science and technology would lead the way to a better future. During World War II, DDT, known as the Miracle Pesticide, was sprayed on islands to combat insect-borne diseases such as typhus and malaria. As pesticide use spread from the military to general use by the American public, these inexpensive and widely available insecticides became common in many households. However, few understood the threat that these chemicals posed. It would take the voice of one incredibly influential woman to change the public's opinion of these silent killers. Rachel Carson's exploration in the field of pesticides throughout the late 1950s and early 1960s has led her to be recognized as the person who sparked the modern environmental movement. With the publication of her book, Silent Spring, Carson encountered opposition as the chemical industries fought against the research she synthesized in exchange with the previously unaware public. Despite the efforts of the chemical industries, Silent Spring served as an inspiration to the American people. From the average citizen to important government officials, many were persuaded to take action and minimize their use of pesticides to protect the environment. From a young age, Carson was fascinated with the world around her, an interest that she continued to pursue through her later exploration of pesticides. In 1929, when Carson attended Johns Hopkins University, she worked in a lab studying embryonic development, which prepared her to later study the effects of pesticides, specifically DDT. Carson was studying for years and years and years, so she knew the biology and how nature worked, and mm -hmm. so she knew how fragile it was. After graduating, Carson began working as a science writer and editor at the Bureau of Fisheries, where she developed the ability to make scientific topics more easily understood by those who were unfamiliar with such complex ideas. This ability was vital to the success of her first two books, The Sea Around Us and Under the Sea Wind, and gave her a credible reputation before publishing the controversial Silent Spring. A turning point in Carson's career was in January of 1958, when she received a concerned letter from her friend, Olga Owens Huggins. In her letter, Huggins described how she had found her beloved birds dead the morning after a government-issued aerial spraying of DDT on her estate. The disastrous effects that DDT seemed to have on Huggins' property drove Carson to explore the impacts of chemicals on the environment and publish her findings in a book she titled, Silent Spring. It inspired her to put aside the book she was writing and write Silent Spring, which became the most important book in the environmental movement. Through her extensive exploration of pesticides for Silent Spring, Rachel Carson synthesized shocking information about the dangers of pervasive chemical use. Rachel was interested in many issues, corresponded with both scientists, humanists, and environmentalists, mostly in Europe, but around the world. During her exploration, Carson searched far and wide to gather evidence to back up her argument. Working with a team from the National Institute of Health, Carson was able to piece together evidence showing that tumors in sheep, leukemia in housewives, and bone marrow degeneration in farmers were all linked to DDT exposure. Carson also collected information from Belhem Hooper, researcher and founding director of the Environmental Cancer Section at the National Cancer Institute. Hooper's information about cancer-causing chemicals aided Carson's exploration of the impacts pesticides could have on humans. Additionally, Carson drew upon her previous exploration of embryonic development to discover that DDT caused the thinning of birds' eggshells. After substantial time and effort gathering information, Rachel Carson was able to successfully synthesize her research into a book that would change history. In July 1962, Silent Spring made its public debut when it was first published as excerpts in The New Yorker. These excerpts were crucial to the exchange of Carson's ideas with the public, as The New Yorker was a popular magazine that allowed Carson to exchange her ideas with housewives and businessmen alike. In the complete book, published a few months later, Carson exchanged information with her readers about the human price of pesticides. 
Silent Spring invoked fear in those who read it and made its readers understand that the overuse of pesticides must not continue. Because of the strong stance Carson took against the use of pesticides, she encountered opposition from the chemical industries, who relied on large amounts of DDT to sell their products. For this new insect destroyer contains a lot of DDT, not just a little. Its DDT content is even higher than government specifications. Before Silent Spring was even published as a complete book, Valsical Chemical threatened to sue Houghton Mifflin, Rachel Carson's publisher, for libel, claiming that sinister forces influenced the book. Monsanto, a multinational agrochemical corporation, wrote a pamphlet called The Desolate Year in response to Silent Spring. The Desolate Year gave an exaggerated view of what the world would be like during a year without chemicals, with insects running rampant and ruining crops everywhere. The assault that Carson and her book encountered was severe. One of her biggest critics was a biochemist from chemical corporation American Cyanamid, Dr. Robert White Stevens. The major claims in Miss Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, are gross distortions of the actual facts, completely unsupported by scientific experimental evidence and general practical experience in the field. Carson's opponents didn't just confine their criticisms to Carson's science, but also resorted to sexist attacks. The New Yorker published one such letter that was unabashedly sexist in tone, saying, Isn't it just like a woman to be scared to death of a few little bugs? Ironically, although Carson encountered sexist attacks on her scientific credibility, she became a feminist icon for females everywhere. Her strong stance against the harsh criticism she encountered, along with the inspiration she gave to women, showed that Carson was a powerful female figure who wasn't afraid to challenge social norms. Despite the criticism of both Carson and her book, Silent Spring was still hugely successful, selling more than 250,000 copies within its first year. The book's message caused a public uproar because of the popularity of DDT and the fact that Americans knew this chemical and could understand the danger they were in. The public's call for change spurred President John F. Kennedy into action, who had advocated for environmental issues during his presidential campaign two years earlier. I want the Public Health Service to take a closer look at this? Yes, I, 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 and I know that they uh, already are. I think particularly, of course, uh, Ms. Carson's book, but uh, they are. In May of 1963, he ordered the President's Science Advisory Council to investigate the harm of pesticides, which solidified Carson's claims and prompted other scientists to continue the exploration of these hazardous chemicals. Later, the Environmental Protection Agency, created by President Nixon, worked to place bans and restrictions on dangerous pesticides. On December 31, 1972, the EPA issued a press release banning DDT in the United States achieving Carson's goal of changing the public's perception towards dangerous chemicals. Rachel Carson worked to spread awareness of the subtle but disastrous effects that humans can have on the earth, and her commitment to the environment provides us with inspiration to continue her work today. Carson's legacy lives on through the works of those who aspire to follow in her footsteps and spread awareness of current environmental issues. Earth Day, created by U.S. Senator Gaylord Nelson in 1970, was widely celebrated as a result of the emerging environmental consciousness that Silent Springs started. Earlier in 1968, Nelson emphasized the significance of Silent Spring in his remarks regarding a statewide ban of DDT, noting that her book visibly shook a country that had become complacent about the indiscriminate spreading of these long-lived poisons. Even after the creation of Earth Day, environmentalists continued to exchange the ideas that Carson introduced to the public through Silent Spring. Former Vice President and active environmentalist Al Gore explains the impact Carson had on his life, saying, Rachel Carson was one of the reasons why I became so conscious of the environment and so involved with environmental issues. Carson's beliefs about the powerful and often negative effect humans could have on the natural world continue to be at the heart of today's environmental movement. Her impassioned cry to protect the environment in her book, Silent Spring, is a message that has and will continue to guide environmentalists for years to come.